Welcome to This Week from Blue Mountain Broadcasting. I'm your host, Lanelle Ellis, and I'm very glad that you've tuned into the show today. I'm going to be sharing with you about a ministry you may or may not have heard of called Leading to the Light. And my guest today will be Steve Rawlings representing that ministry, and he has quite the faith journey story to tell. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. And really exciting things are happening. We are moving forward on a lot of projects at Blue Mountain Television. So hanging into the end of the show to the station news will also be something you'll want to do. Let's start now with our devotional thought. My family and I have been reading through the 45th and 46th chapters of Isaiah this week. And in these passages, God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah and emphasizing something. He keeps emphasizing that he's Yahweh, the only God and the only deity who has the power to do anything. Let's take a look at the pa this pa passage that illustrates that from Isaiah chapter 45, and we're going to start with verse 18. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, you who have escaped from the nations. They have no knowledge who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God that cannot save. Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a just God and a savior. There is none besides me. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That to me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. It's interesting in this passage, God just keeps repeating over and over that he's the only God, the Lord. And of course, when we're reading this in, in our Bible translations, especially the King James or the New King James, every time the word Lord is there, it's really the word Yahweh. So God is saying, I'm Yahweh, I'm the only one. And when we come toward the end of that passage, he says, I'm going to swear by myself. He swears by himself because there is no one higher. He can't say, well, I swear by, you know, as the Romans would swear by one of their gods or, or various ancient groups would swear by a God or even people today might swear and use an oath using God's name. God is saying, I'm, I'm the only name I can swear by because there is no one higher than me. He is the creator, the omnipotent sovereign. So why is God so concerned about this? Why does he seem to be a bit jealous talking about those who carve out images and take them around to worship and those sorts of things? Why does he instruct humans not to put anyone or anything ahead of him? Why does he have to plead this way with us? Well, perhaps it's because we all too easily forget that he truly is ruler over all. He is powerful, the master craftsman who made us. The people of ancient times, of course, formed idols out of metal, stone, wood, whatever they had, and then bowed down and worshiped them. But we don't do anything that silly today. Or do we? I suppose that we have our own way of setting material things, and sometimes even people, above God. We give way too much attention to things, material items, technology, and sometimes even other people whom we idolize. So God calls us back to faithfulness to him. 
It's a calling to be loyal, to have no other gods before him. Here's a little bit more from Isaiah chapter 46, this time starting with verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country, indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from righteousness. I bring my, my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. What an appeal. God says, listen to me, you stubborn hearted. This is what God is calling out to me. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted. He's calling out to me, he's calling out to you. And he tells us that we are far from righteousness, but he's not planning to leave us there. He has a plan to bring his righteousness near to us. He's providing salvation for Israel, for his glory. You know, when he provides salvation for Israel, that's us. We're Israel. We are Israel and God brings near our salvation. That's hard to resist. God is hard to resist. His love is calling us today. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Joining me now is Steve Rawlings from Leading to the Light. And it is a pleasure to have you here on our show today. I know you even did a little bit of traveling to get here and to speak with our yeah. audience. Yeah. We actually met uh, at the ASI convention and I'm so glad you were willing to come yeah. and tell our audience a bit about this very important ministry. Yeah. And since we don't know a lot, give us a little info. Well, I've Leading to the Light has been working for 12 years. We've been working in Southeast Asia, primarily Thailand and Myanmar. Um, 2010, we, I was a cabinet builder for 20 years. Um, started realize, feeling a calling. I was just impressed that it, I needed to do something different. I, I was driving, delivering some cabinets. And as I drive, it was an hour away, I often pray and just plan ahead. And um, as I was thinking, I realized I started, I kind of got discouraged. I thought, Lord, I've been working for 20 years and I'm still not to where I want to be. What is your plan? And mine's not working. And so from that point on, things started happening. We met a family. They invited us on a trip, a three month tour for Thailand, or tour mission vision tour that opened our eyes to what the possibilities were for a family to live in a, a dark location of the earth. Mm -hmm. and so that's how we started. Friends, we started figuring out how we could um, make it happen. We started selling things. We actually ended up selling everything, most everything, and um, moving over there. I phased out my work, and um, after three years of planning, um, we started, we were ready to go, but we didn't have funding to do that. We had, in our mind, our comfort zone was $3,000. We figured we could reestablish our family of four in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So we were aiming to raise that $3,000 and tickets to get there. And then we were just gonna, we had read a quote that said, if families will move to dark locations of the earth and let the light of Jesus shine through them, much can be accomplished. And we, mm -hmm. as we looked at that, we thought, that sounds like a call to me. And um, my wife said, what, if, if we seek first God's kingdom, will he really take care of our needs? Yes. So we looked at this as a way to test God's word, yes. see if we could really 
trust it and make plans based on what he says. And you did it. You took. You have a couple of kids. Yeah. We had, and and you all just went to Thailand. Yeah. And so we didn't have the fun. We were debt free. We were free to go, but we didn't have that three thousand dollars, and we weren't sure how. I'd kind of phase work out, thinking now it's time to go. So we just started telling friends, we're going to move to Thailand and do let, let the light of Jesus shine through us. Yes. Well, we, um, as we talked, just a few weeks, I mean, a few days, weeks, um, a friend said, we'll buy your family's one-year visas. Mm -hmm. And as we're praying and talking, another friend, friend said, we'll pay for a rental car to get you from your home in Idaho to the Seattle airport. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting excited. God's confirming and things are yes. opening up. Yes. And then a, a friend said, we'll buy you one-way tickets. <laughs> and I was like, yes, we can go. We have a way. We are going. And my wife said, one-way tickets? Uh -huh. Wait, how long are we going to be there? How will we get back? And How long were you, th were you there consistently? Ten years. We were there <laughs> ten years. <laughs> That's so, great. <laughs> so we ended up leaving our house with $900 and one-way tickets with our family of four going to this wow. land that we had visited once but didn't really have a call to work on any projects and except for this quote. So much has happened. That's like 12 years ago. Yeah. So what, what are the key elements of your ministry now? So nowadays we... Um, when we got there, we, we thought, what do missionaries do? How do you let the light of Jesus shine through you? And we've, we've thought, well, f missionaries, they come to the land, they learn the language, maybe they plant a church or have Bible studies. Let's just start learning the language. And so we did, and it was not easy. We, after three months, I thought Jesus would come before I could teach anyone <laughs> anything. So I said, we started praying. Why are we here? What can we do? And we found out that, I found out that the Adventist church had been in Thailand since 1905, more than a hundred years before I got there. Yes. So God didn't send me to start and finish the work. He had already been working that way. And we decided we would be more effective to partner with the local people. Mm -hmm. The ones that God's that are con consecrated and um, dedicated to yes. the mission of the church. And so we started praying, send us those people that we can support and help. Mm -hmm. So now our ministry has turned from a family living in the mission field to um, a ministry that supports local gospel workers. Yes. We partnered with three retired pastors. Mm -hmm. They all had evangelistic machines that had been building for more than 30 years, one of them 55 years, and they, they're just growing and growing and growing. And we're able to expand the work hugely every month, way more than I could do, al I could do alone by um, trying to learn the language and talk to somebody. And yes. So, and when I, I was at your website and mm -hmm. and saw that you have uh, it looks like schools that you're mm -hmm. sponsoring or you're a part of or yeah so one of the one of the pastors we partnered with is from the Karen People Group they live on in Min in Myanmar on the border of Thailand mm -hmm. there's been a lot of war they've been actually going through genocide since 1949 uh. and so there's a lot of needs for them and um, the pastor. When I met him 10, 12 years ago, had 42 little jungle schools that he had started, mm -hmm. and um, 220 teachers and 80 Bible workers. And he said, can you help me? I don't know how to, um, I want my people don't know how to carry on the work that I've started and mm -hmm. I want to train them. Mm -hmm. So he said, will you help me start a school and will you fundraise so that I can stay here and train my people to expand this work that I've started? Nowadays, he's 86. Yes. and still going strong. Wow. But we've trained in 12 years eight strong leaders to carry on the work that he started. So that's kind of the way we've been working. That's been a great way for Leading to the, to the Light to just come in and support and help yeah. these schools grow into more support students yeah. who are going to the school, mm -hmm. yes? Yes, yeah, so there's kids who come so far out in the jungle that there's no schools. They come, we build dormitories, they can stay at, near the school. Get an education without the fear of being stolen and put into human trafficking yeah. or slavery. And so part of it's dorms, part, we have right now, we're five schools, we're starting three other ones. 
um, we're, we're establishing. They've already started, and we want to expand them into true education centers yes. where more people can hear about Jesus. And through those schools, the students are, are learning about Jesus. They're singing the songs. They're learning how to pray. They're going back to their homes. And so the, the school is like the, the foundation for the gospel to go out into these remote jungle villages. Do you use the term centers of influence sometimes? Yeah, centers mm -hmm. of influence for us include schools and dorms and health centers and clinics. And mostly that's, that's it, but oh, technic, um, technical schools. We, te we teach mm -hmm. sewing and practical things so that they can earn a living and some of our Bible workers can use that to be self-supporting. Sure. So what would you say are some of the greatest needs for your ministry right now? The greatest need is, um, I don't know if I have a greatest need, but one of the big needs that we have right now is there's a lot of war going on in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, in our schools, because of the war in Myanmar, the government schools are closed, which has turned into a blessing for the Adventist schools because they are being they're allowed to stay open because they're not politically aligned with either side ah. of the war that's going on. So we're getting a surplus of kids this year and um, our primary um, support to the schools is paying teachers salary and supplying food and school supplies needs if they need computers or whatever they need. Yes. So that's the, the war and the surplus of children that have come. We have in our mission schools, they're more like grade schools, academies. Mm -hmm. We have an extra 150 kids this year, and in the, oh, that, yeah, in, that's a big number. Extra. Well, in the the seminaries that are in Myanmar, we have 300 extra students, and they wow. we don't really support them as much, but we're we're making Bible lessons, children's Bible lessons, and all these non-Christian students are learning about Jesus for the first time. So God's turned a bad thing into a way to expand the work of the gospel. And so mm -hmm. funding for the schools to buy food is the biggest need in that area right now. And this is the kind of opportunity that you do not want to let go by. It's the kind of thing yeah. when you have extra students take full oh, yeah. advantage so that you can yeah. share with them. Yeah, and yeah. Our, our purpose is to supply the local workers. The local workers are poor. Yeah. They cannot afford to build a little clinic. And, and in the, the buildings are $3,000. We train the workers, we put them in the buildings, and we open up new territory every other month. Probably something new is opening, but as much as possible. So, so really moving forward. So the forward. funding is, yeah. So $3,000 for a new building? For a little, it's a, yeah, it's a small building. We started calling them house churches because in Myanmar, the, the, the Buddhist monks will get really aggressive if they think there's a Christian group having meetings. Mm -hmm. So we, we were building these house houses and mm -hmm. we call them house churches. And they would, the monks would visit them and say, this is not a house, there's no walls inside. Put a wall in here. So we, we changed, we, we started calling them clinics now. And they, mm -hmm. over three years of doing medical missionary work, helping the Buddhists, helping the locals, now we're well accepted in the area, we can get away with calling, building clinics now. And mm -hmm. so we're able to build the same building, just new names so that the monks don't feel nervous about it. And so through the medical missionary work, we are finding that to be the entering wedge for mm -hmm. the gospel. <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you said that, you know, 3,000 for this building that will mm -hmm. help enter into a new area, yeah. really, yeah. that's not very much mm -hmm. in U.S. dollars. No, not it's, at all. it's not hard. It's, it's really good. And we, the pastors are scouting new areas where we can establish a new center of influence. This mm -hmm. year, coming year, we have two more health centers that will be developed. We're planning to build 10 more clinics. Yes. And um, in between clinics, we build churches now and then in Thailand side. And so mm -hmm. there's lots of uh, opportunity to supply the, the infrastructure for the dedicated gospel workers to expand their work. Mm -hmm. the, they can never do that without the help from us in the West. So right now, uh, I'm sure our viewers are thinking, yeah. okay, this sounds really great. Yeah. And uh, many people are probably feeling impressed that they'd like to be part of it. How can they become involved? How can they donate? 
How do they find yeah. out more? Well, we could. You can start by going to our website, leadingtothelight.org. Mm -hmm. It's in construction now, but I think the tabs at the top will get you to some pages that are yeah, not re reconstruction. You're uh, reconstruction. Yeah, you're yeah. improving it's on it. It's been there for 12 years, yes. but it's time to re re improve re, re envision it. it. Yeah. yeah. So they can go there, and there's there's tons of um, donate now buttons for different projects. Yes. Um, there's contact us. They can email me if they or call me if they want to get more detailed information. Mm -hmm. I can talk for hours about what God's doing over there. Sure. All right. So that's good. So leadingtothelight.org. Yes. Okay, yeah. takes you to the website. You can see some of the projects and some of the schools. Mm -hmm. I know I really enjoyed looking at the pictures when I was on your website, just Thank seeing you. images yeah. of of the kids yeah. and um, it's the people you're helping. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. Well, what a great faith Thanks. journey you and your family have been on and continue yeah. to be on. Well, we've definitely proved that God's Word can be trusted yes. many times. Money is not the issue. It's being willing to step out of your comfort zone and see what God can do. And He's promised angels. I mean, I've, I've read many quotes where angels are waiting for us to devise a way to reach a soul for God's kingdom. Yes. I just read a quote last week that said, angels are almost um, impatiently waiting for us to stand up and go speak to somebody. And it doesn't have to be in the foreign mission field. It can be across the street or your neighbor. It's it take sure can. The, have courage and step out of your comfort zone and just say hi to somebody or find out what their needs are. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Steve. I mm. really appreciate you taking some time to share with uh, us about Leading to the Light. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Time for Station News. I have something very exciting to tell you. You have been waiting. You've been waiting for that next episode of Secret Life of the Desert, and it is upon us. This Sunday at 7 p.m., you can see brand new premiere of episode number 10 of this wonderful show produced for Blue Mountain Television by Daniel Biggs and Mike Denny. So be sure to tune in for that one. And also, in case you miss it, Sunday at 7, you can see it Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. or Thursday at 6 p.m. Also, we have a special airing of the film Tell the World, which is a dramatic retelling of the story of some of the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist faith and movement. And that's going to be on October 22 at 7 p.m. So Saturday evening, October 22 at 7 p.m. And let's talk about the progress at the Wallula facility. We are really excited. We have uh, Elaine with an office there. So Elaine Hinshaw, who's now working with us as our creative and development director, has her office there at the new place. And uh, I've got a little office that I can be in some of the time over there as well. And we've got Keith Carlin, our project manager, over there just about every day working on putting up walls with his volunteers that are helping him. And uh, we've got some pictures to show you so you can see what that's looking like. But we have walls for offices going up, walls for a storage area that's going to go in, and painting is starting to happen. Speaking of that, we've got a big day with Walla Walla University on their service day on October 19. And a huge shout out of thanks to those Walla Walla University students, 10 of them who have signed up to come and help us paint in the new facility, in the hallway, and in some of the offices on that service day morning, October 19. So we're just thrilled about this progress that we're making going forward. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some of these details. I know we've got phone lines being installed at the new place uh, coming up later this week. So just a lot of activity happening there and uh, we're excited for it. And we're also thrilled because you're giving your support to it both in time and in your finances. Speaking of that, we could use more financial help for this move to the new facility. We're doing the inexpensive part right now, and it's great, but the expensive part is coming, the part where we are going to be raising funds for the new equipment that will go into that studio. So when we get to fleshing out the rest of the studio space, that's when uh, we're really also going to be needing some special gifts from you. And here's another thing to mark on your calendar that you absolutely don't wanna miss. I have to tell you that 
the closer we get to this event and the more we meet together and plan for it and work with the groups who are gonna be part of it, the more I get excited. This is our happy, healthy, and saved weekend. And it's going to be bigger and better than anything like this that Blue Mountain Television has ever put on before. It's gonna be at the Walla Walla Valley Academy Auditorium on November 4 and 5. You want to come there to hear our special speaker, D. Casper, a wonderful speaker. I know a lot of you are familiar with him. And then we will also have musicians who are so dear to our hearts. Rejoice Trio will be there. So we will have Eliana and Tobin Kearns and Hannah Schaefer in person and together again for the first time since Hannah went as a missionary to Thailand. So we're, we're just really jazzed about them coming to play the special music for our weekend. And in addition to that, we're also gonna have some wonderful music from the musicians from Wava and a few from Rogers Adventist School as well. So we've got some of our students involved in that. A fantastic weekend that's gonna include a potluck too for all of you who come out and wanna join us for that. So be paying attention and looking for more information about the potluck. And that will all just be right ahead of our fundraiser, which will then be from November 6 through 8, live on air, when D. Casper will continue to be with us as we meet together from 7 to 10 p.m. on those three evenings to raise funds for the operating budget for Blue Mountain Broadcasting Association. Very, very important. So please mark all of that on your calendar. Thanks again for your support and your interest, your care the prayers that you offer on behalf of this ministry. Appreciate all of it. And I wanna thank you for watching the show today. I'll see you next time.